Hey guys, hope you're all staying safe and you're all at home. I know if you're an outdoor lover like myself, going absolutely nuts, climbing up the walls. So uh, hopefully we can bring you some content that uh, makes you dream about the good old days when you could get in your truck and get out there. We've done a couple of cooking shows for you now, We've done a couple of uh, reviews, and uh, I've decided to invite some of my mates that have done some epic trips, whether it be in vehicles, boats, whatever mode of transport, and sit back, have a couple of cold ones with you guys, and um, you know, generally tell the story. Um, I know I'm, I'm pretty excited when we're sitting around the campfire and the guys come up with some epic stories, some epic fails, um, chatting about their experiences. So I wanted to share that with you guys. You don't always get to join us and join the people that I'm out in the, in, on trips with, and let's share that with you today. Following this, we're also going to be doing a series where we're going to be discussing certain topics. And I'll bring some of these experts or some of these guys that have got a wealth of knowledge through different continents and different environments and discussing different topics. So comment below what you want us to discuss and we'll put something together, you know, whether it be planning your trip, whether it be convoy etiquette, whether it be emergency gear, um, border crossings. Um, setting up your solar panels, um, refrigeration, you name it, um, you know, tents, rooftop tents versus ground tents. There are a ton of topics out there and they, they have been flogged to death by people um, like myself, but um, I'm going to bring a twist to it. So I'm going to invite people, maybe two, three at a time, and we're going to have a, like I said, a couple of cold ones around the campfire or around the laptop and... Uh, discuss these topics in a, well, everybody's got their own opinion and I'm sure there'll be a couple of arguments coming up. So we filmed the first one already and it, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we'd like to hear the topics that you want to discuss versus the topics that we're discussing and pushing on to you. So comment below and let us know what topic you would, uh, would like us to discuss. I hope you guys enjoy the show. I'm going to try and get a hold of uh, Graham on the laptop now. And um, yeah, let's let's see how he conquered Africa in a Series 3 Land Rover. My first question is going to be how many times did he break down? <laughs> All right, guys, sit back, grab a cold one or grab a couple of cold ones and uh, enjoy the story. Let me try and get hold of him. Hey, mate, you there? Can you hear me? Hey, how you doing? Yeah, all good. How are you, man? Yeah, good, Graham. Thanks for joining us, mate. No, my pleasure. You're, ah, you're in the garden over there. Oh, you're lucky, man. Look at you, under the LARPA. Under the LARPA, got my outdoor AC blowing on me. It's nice and cool. Very sticky and humid today, though, but nice, man. It's nice to be outside after uh, being inside all day. Yeah, man, I wish you were 15 minutes away from each other, man. I wish I was there. It's just such a pity what's going on at the moment. We've got to do this, this kind of a conversation. It's just nuts. Be far cool. Wait, do you think... Yeah, if you think about it, Sean, we should be in we should be in Oman at the moment doing our Easter Easter long trip, right? Our ex little Easter expedition that we've not been able to do this year because of this COVID nineteen. You know, you're absolutely right. It is that time. I think two years ago we did that twenty one days. Ah, it's that time of the year. We should be on the coast right now, filming this, sitting on the beach. Anyway, it is what it is, and uh, yeah, that's why we're doing these shows, I suppose. And everybody's uh, everybody's watched Netflix about three or four times, and then watched Amazon 40 times and now YouTube, there we go. So hopefully we can create some content for the guys to sit back and enjoy, you know, a bit of storytelling, you know, a bit of crazy, crazy people like yourselves going out there and, and exploring the world and people sitting back, yeah. wishing they could actually start their engines on their truck and, and go there and do, or, or just leave the house. <laughs> I don't know. Just go outside the front door would be good, wouldn't it? You know what I mean? But yeah, 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 yeah. It difficult is. times for everybody, and you know, hopefully everyone's staying safe, and yeah. we can at least we can chat like this. It's good fun, you know, but we do miss it. Um, but it'll be over, and uh, hopefully, as long as everyone stays safe, we'll get back to it soon enough. I'm sure. Looking forward to the Kareem season down in Talala. We'll yeah. be our next one if we get away this year, right? Hopefully, everything clears by July, August, and we can get out there and go and enjoy the monsoons down in Talala. See how it goes. Right, the pre prerequisite for this. Before we start, have you got a cold one? Uh, yeah, actually, I've got two. I got one in my Yeti keeping cold, and I got one in my hand for now. 
Ah, there we go. Okay. Conversa a conversation with you may take a while. It's going to take a while, mate. You've got an epic story to tell. So uh, let's, let's kick into it, mate. Um, I, think, I think the best place to start is, you know, what, how, you know, how did this come about? Where, what's the train of thought? I mean, you want to just travel. You've been living in the United Bowl. You've been living in the GCC since 81. You've got this whole backyard, the desert, the beauty over here. How did you decide to go to Africa, mate? Well, it was, a, it was an interesting one. Nikita, my wife and I had been, um, at the time, my partner, we'd been in, traveling through Southeast Asia. I met Nikita in Goa. And she'd been through Southeast Asia. I'd been traveling through Thailand, India, Vietnam, Cambodia, you know, doing, doing that type of stuff. And um, we met. And we came back and I ended up going to Cyprus and I was working in, um, working in Cyprus on a hydroponic farm, helping um, a guy there grow aubergine melons using hydroponics. Yeah. And we were sat there and over dinner one night, Nikita and I were sat there and we'd had a few too many as you do on these, on these things. And um, yeah. the plan was like, well, what do we do next? You know, do we want to keep on traveling through Southeast Asia or do something different? And for some unbeknown reason, I put my hand and I said, I know, let's go to Africa. So we decided at that time that we're going to go to Africa. Now, that was just the plan. The concept was born there and then. The problem was we didn't have a, a plan or, or whenever to go. And we had a budget, a yeah. tiny, tiny budget. So... I think at the time the budget was about two thousand pounds. That'll be enough to buy us a car and drive to East Africa, right? <laughs> yeah. When, when was this? When was this, Graham? When? What? What year? Okay, so this was nineteen. End of ninety-eight. We put the plan together. Okay. And we oh, ended up going. Fair amount of money. 90, fair, amount huh? of money fair amount of money in ninety-eight. Two thousand pounds. Well, you'd think, right? I mean, you know, living in Dubai, I knew I could pick up old cars and stuff like that. I thought it should be enough. Yeah. But you go to, you go to East Africa and it's a whole different thing. So the reason we chose uh, East Africa was I was born in Nairobi and I hadn't been back. So, right. you know, yeah. we, I had no idea, right? Absolutely no idea. The only, the only thing I had was I knew there was a friend of mine called Paul living in Diani Beach on the south coast of Mombasa. That was it. And that's pretty much but nowhere. Really? Yeah, you know, it took, you, know, you fly to Nairobi, you fly down, and, da, 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 da. and it, you know, that's how it started. So, you know, we put this plan together. Let's go to Africa. We got there. So now we're in Diani, and it was like, okay, we need to find a car. Okay. Because you can't drive through Africa without a car. No. Yeah. And we very quickly realized. It's equipment, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. You know. <laughs> you could go buy those thousand mile of flip-flops if you wanted to, but they weren't going to get me around Africa too well. No. So we went looking for a car and um, you had a choice. Diani, there was no vehicle. So the only obvious place we could look was Mombasa. And yeah. what we quickly realized is we couldn't find the right vehicle. Um, I mean, we just didn't. Then couldn't find something that was going to get us from basically Kenya all the way to Cape Town was the original plan. We're yeah. starting Kenya, see, go all the way to Cape Town or as far as we can go. And that was the idea. Yeah. And typically um, find something on the coast, I suppose they're all rust buckets, right? So it's better to go uh, yeah, man. look somewhere uh, else. We, 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 we couldn't find anything. There were cars totally destroyed. And for the money they were asking, it was just a waste of time. So what we quickly realized was, if we want a car, we're going to have to go to Nairobi. Okay. Makes sense. So we, got a, we left the Arnie. It's about a two-hour drive to Mombasa, where we got the overnight train from Mombasa to Nairobi, because the train was still running in those days. <laughs> it, I mean, there it, it, it was nothing fancy about it. But we were used to Indian trains, because we've been traveling around India and stuff like that. But this was very similar to that sort of scenario. I think there are more chickens and goats on the trains in Africa than there are in India, mate. India is full of yeah, people. Not, yeah, 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 yeah. There was a few. <laughs> there was a few. 
especially especially back then, you know. It was uh, yeah. yeah, look, it was a good trip. We got to Nairobi. The train trip in itself, the breakdowns in the middle of the game park, blah blah blah. That was a whole. That's a whole story in itself. But I mean, the the mission was go to Nairobi and find a car. Yeah. Okay. And on a two thousand pound budget, it was going to be tough. So, how did you have any? Re- you had any friends in Nairobi? How, you know what? How did you? We sort of we through my through my mum my mum and dad's friends, but through Paul Indiani, we knew call this guy, he may be able to help you find a car or call this guy, they may give you some advice or do that type of stuff. That's all we really had. We didn't have any friends that were saying, come and stay with us or anything like that, you know? So I found through the Lonely Planet book, a place called the Upper Hill Campsite, which is near the center of town, just outside of Nairobi Park. And we had this tiny little, I think it was a Euro sport, Ten, you could fit two bodies on the floor, but that was it. We had no mattresses. We had a baggage, and this tent, no. and we rocked up at this campsite. So either you and, very- and your baggage is outside, or the baggage is in the tent, and you're outside, basically. Correct. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, you couldn't swing a cat in it. Put it that way. So you just couldn't do it. But the problem was also. You're living on the floor, and guess what? Nairobi is high altitude, and it rained a lot, didn't it? Afternoon and, showers, guaranteed uh, afternoon showers, and it pours down for an hour, and it pours down for a half. Yeah, and we weren't really ready for it. You know, we were, we were green to it. You know, yeah. traveling through Southeast Asia, you'd stay in lodges, or you'd, you'd rent rooms, and you'd do all that sort of stuff. We're here, we, we didn't know. And we ended up going to a hardware store and buying these big foam blocks. Uh, they're like a meet, half a meter each. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I bought four, four for one side, four for the other, and I stuffed them in the bottom. And that was where we slept, right? Um, in this campsite. And we were there, mate, two months. Yeah? 60 nice. days we were, in, we were in Nairobi looking for a vehicle. That's nuts. So, yeah, it was, it was pretty intense, you know, living in those quarters. But the, the saving grace, I guess, for us was we were in this place called the Upper Hill Campsite. And over time they get to know you and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you become friends with the barman and this that, and the other so you can get your bits and pieces and everyone starts looking after each other but i don't think i told you I, 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 we met the uh, son of the owner of cause the beer the american guy he was driving a bmw belt drive through africa of course um, uh, the cause beer that that they do that sponsors all the racing and all that mm-hmm. cause american beer uh, yeah 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 better than bud light but nowhere near any african beer but yeah 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 yeah, yeah. So he was quite cool and stuff. Um, I mean, you know, you meet lots of different characters, right? As yeah. And we were so used to that because of our traveling and stuff. Um, yeah, because obviously, you cool. Vietnam and all that, yeah. So, that, I mean, you're going to rely on these people and the knowledge that they give you traveling through Africa, which you haven't done yet, right? You've been there for Wait, how long now? I haven't been there. So we've now been in country, what, four months in total? Coming on the coast, looking for a car up in Nairobi now. <laughs> and anyway, I, through, through a guy that we knew or met, um, he said, call this guy at the garage. And I put him on the case. And he eventually um, called me up and said, I've got three cars for you to come and have a look at. Okay. So the first one we looked at was an old Land Cruiser. I think it was a, if my memory's right, I mean, this is 20 years ago. It was a three-cylinder diesel Land Cruiser. Like an FJ40, but extended wheelbase that they used to do on safari. Yeah, it yeah. had three gears. It had three gears, yeah? Which I reckon was perfect for Africa. Front, go, far, slow, fast, reverse. That was your lot, yeah? <laughs> I mean, this thing was just archaic. I think it was older than the dinosaurs, mate. <laughs> but that was never, <laughs> that was never going to work for us. And the next one, he said, I've got an old... Um, Ex ambulance. Oh, okay. It's a 1973 Series 3 ambulance. Nice. Okay. So it's already no, packed. All right. You've got all the space in the world. Great. So just a bench, bench seat on the front and fully open in the back. And they had a rooftop tent on the Land, cru- on the land Cruiser, yeah. which they said they would give me. So ah. they gave me the rooftop tent from the Land Cruiser, 
which we fitted onto the Land Rover <laughs> and bought it. But here was the problem. Oh, hang on. Did you, did you sell all your mattresses, mate? <laughs> uh, no, I kept them. Yeah. Okay. But here's, the, here's the problem. I had a £2,000 budget. Uh-huh. The Land Rover was going to cost me five. Oh. What, what model was so, that? Series 3. It was that 70s, right? 1973 Series 3. Okay, that's why you yeah, need cushions, because it's got no suspension. So you had to sit on the cushions to save your back. <laughs> save your ass, mate. Oh, oh dear. Yeah, that was fun. But oh, we had to deal with that problem later, later today. But All right, so Graham, just to stop you there, right? So in the introduction, I said the first question I was going to ask you is, is how many times did you have to fix, or how many breakdowns did you have in it? But now that you're saying it's a Series 3, it probably was the 2.2-litre four-cylinder petrol motor, right? Correct, correct. So that's correct. been bulletproof. So I'm going to let you off the hook over here on the Land Rover <laughs> on how many breakdowns and... Yeah, um, I'll let you off on that. You had a bulletproof motor. You know what? I, I, I'll, I'll say this. Yeah. I'll say this. I never really had engine trouble. Yeah. I had to deal with other issues, which are Land Rover centric. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we, we, all, we all laugh about it now. When, when you've owned a Land Rover like that, and then you own these new modern vehicles, when you go back to this old Land Rover style, um, I used to panic when it wasn't leaking oil. While it was leaking, I'm good. When it stops leaking, what's going on? Stop, literally, now, don't drive. Find it, where, 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 where is it, yeah? Uh, so because, all the Land Rover people yeah. are saying about leaking power. So obviously when it stops leaking power, it has no power, right? Yeah, there's no power. <laughs> it either goes or stops. It's not, there's no in between, right? Okay, enough of the Land Rover stuff, because I'm going to get yeah. shut down for this. Right, so you, you, but, you get this vehicle, right? So now you've so, just buy it. So I bought the vehicle. But you got £2,000. Yeah, well, you see, this is where the kicker comes in. So I had, and there was a, the back story to that is I had to make a couple of phone calls and beg, steal and borrow, and I ended up with the money, right? Okay. So, as you do. The so bank of dad was off. The bank of dad was still operating twenty years ago, right? You know, so it was okay. Hang on a second, right? So okay, besides bank of dad that was operating twenty years ago, let's um, you 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 put two thousand pounds for this trip, right? Was that for the trip or just for the vehicle? Because now you've gone to no for the no two thousand pounds was for the vehicle. Vehicle alone, okay. Because I was just yeah. about to say you put two thousand pounds for this trip, and you want to go from your 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 original part of this trip was. Kenya to Cape, to Cape Town, right? That's the plan. Correct. That was the plan. Okay. All right. So we, had, we had, we had 5,000 pounds. 5,000 pounds was the budget for living costs and, and stuff. Okay. And I had 2,000 to buy the car. Okay. All right. So you so, have your entire travel budget on a car. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> At this point. Okay. But, you know, so... It was interesting because I got the car and you had to do a lot of work to it, right? So I had to buy new tires. They were shot, man. They had been retread so many times. I mean, I was worried driving the car from when I picked it up back to the campsite, for example. Um, I had no tools, so I had to go buy sh tools. And you can't just go buy crappy Chinese tools because on the road, you round, excuse me, you round it all off and uh, you, you're really stuck. So I had to buy tools. Yeah, I then realized spare parts were really expensive in Nairobi for these cars. Believe it or not, you would have thought there'd have been loads of Land Rover parts. Yes, there were, but they weren't cheap. Toyota and all this stuff, really cheap, no problem. So I had to do a visa run and come back to Dubai because my, if, you weren't, if you're outside of Dubai for more than six months, yeah. you lose your visa. True, yes. So, what I did is I arranged, I came back to Dubai and I went to the local dealer here and I gave them a list of all the parts that I needed. I bought the Land Rover owner's book, how to fix your Land Rover book. And I bought all the parts, mate. Um, engine, main gaskets, starter motors, fuel pumps, um, uh, uh, distributors, cap, wires, cables, everything, mate. 
um, CV joint seals, yeah, yeah, yeah. all that stuff. Bought it all in Dubai. Did my visa run, packed it all up, waited for the parts, got them, went back to Kenya. Okay. Now, here's the funny part. Now the journey begins because now I got to get the car from Nairobi back to Diani where I can work on it before yeah. we go on the trip. <laughs> because I can stay with friends in Diani, so it was no, no, it was cheaper for me, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and now we're so. We're what, five months into the beginning of your trip and you haven't started your trip, yeah? Well, probably six yeah, so months now. We're, yeah, no, we're, we're about six months at this point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and I haven't gone anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we're doing these shows right now about planning trips and things like that that everybody's going to be able to watch, right? Which is a follow-on to this series. And this is six months planning and you've got a vehicle. Yeah, well, yeah, it was just crazy, man. I mean, you think about it. Uh, so, but I guess also back in 99, I mean, it was, it was 20 years ago. So, you know, you know how I survived. You know, one of the things that we, we did, I, I'll get to that, actually. I'll get to that a bit later on. But um, I get back to Nairobi and I got to drive the car from Nairobi to Diani, which is south of Mombasa. It's about, I think, mate, my head was about 500 miles, something like that. Yeah. And I'd given myself, leave at six in the morning. I should be there at six at night. 12 hours. Never. Well, yeah. That was going to get entertaining. <laughs> in that trip, I got run off the road three times. No. Yeah? Three no. times. And you know those African roads where you've you, you got the tarmac on the top and they've got these massive cameras. Skinny so you drive down a, and a yeah, big yeah. Rack, yeah. And you've got a big bus coming at you. Yeah. Now, normally, a bus drives straight. But in Africa, a bus drives sideways. Yeah. Because they're buggered. They're bent and everything. They crab. So you drive that. <laughs> and I, I, I can't, there's nowhere for me to go except for into the bush. Actually, it was going left into the bush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, oh, mate, one trip. I did one excursion into the bush, through the bush, man. I mean... Uh, 40 kilometer hour by the time I'd braked and got in through the bush and out the other side. Cracked the chassis on the car uh, and I put a hole in my petrol tank. Now I haven't got anywhere yet. All the spare parts are in the back. Nikita's in the front with me and we're off, we're off going bush already. It was crazy, man. Absolutely crazy. This was, this was Welcome to Driving in Africa 101 starts here. So how, how, did, how did you get the car going again? I mean, you've got fuel leaking all over the damn place. What are you doing? Well, well, well for, when I went through, I heard, obviously, I yeah. heard what had happened. I jumped out, realized I got fuel leak, um, and I was trying to stop it leaking. It was fortunate because the, the crack on the tank was at the back. Yeah. So uh, a little African dude, actually, on the side of the road saw me. He said, no, put soap. And that's where I learned yeah. to stop a fuel link, you, you uh, petrol, you put soap and it bush mechanics, and it stopped the leak, man. Yeah, yeah. That, there's nothing else that works better than the soap. Good old block of sunlight, yeah. the green soap, just crank it on there. It, it'll get you to your destination and then you can fix it. Bush mechanics, it got me home, right? Yeah. Anyway, down these roads. Now, I'm going to start this and I'm going to say this to you. There's a, there's a joke in Kenya. Yeah. What's the difference? Oh, sorry. What's the similar? Sorry. What's the difference between a Kenyan road yeah. and a cigarette? You got me. There's more. There's more tar in a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the trip between Kenya and Ethiopia. Oh, oh man. Oh yes. No potholes. Absolute bloody nightmare. You know, this was Africa, safer, right? And it's safer to drive on the dirt roads in Africa than it is on the tar roads because yes. the transition between tar and pothole and uh, you're slower on a tar road than you are on a dirt road because the dirt road's consistent. Yeah, and I think anyone who's driven in Africa understands, understands the, uh, the concept of this. You know, and a pothole to a normal person is a little pothole, maybe a bit wider than your wheel, about yay deep, right? Potholes in Africa consist of the size of your car, four foot deep, 
with a sheer cliff at the beginning and the end, exit and entrance. So yeah. you either die going in it, or yeah. you die trying going round it, or you go bush to get round it. So you've got choices. Yeah. A nice hot we don't, day. really. This is a welcoming swimming pool, right? When it's there. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. It's great. It's great. Have a pool, you know, you've got your own swimming pool, crack a nice cold one and off you go, and hopefully a bus doesn't run over you. Right, so, uh, so, so you can imagine at this point. The coast right now. You haven't built so anything yet. You, you nothing, just, mate. You've got nothing. 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 I have, I've got absolutely zip at this point. So, um, it, was, it was just like, oh, my God. We get to the army, it's like, we're alive. Great, we're here. So I then, then got on to the case of, right, now I've got to rebuild this car. So I got on it, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and for spares, I had to drive to Mombasa for some stuff that I didn't have. And that's, a, you know, driving to Mombasa in the, in there was a day's event. Yeah. Especially when you can only do, like, maximum 80 kilometers an hour in this, in this car. So... Well, then I again, started doing it. 80 k's per hour in, in, in Africa is like 170 kilometers per hour on the autobahn, mate. Well, there is that. You can't go much faster than that in a lot of cases anyway, right? So, you know, it was just one of those things. And we got on it, did the car, fixed it. And what I did is in the back, where the back of the car was as a fit out, first thing first is you had a bench seat. So yeah. I took out the middle seat and I put a big wooden box there which was my personal stuff. Okay. And I don't know, you know, on a Land Rover, underneath the seats, you pull out, you pull out the seat and underneath the seat, you had a toolbox yeah, yeah, yeah. on both sides. So what I did is on the passenger side, I put in a false bottom. Okay. So I got a metal, I got a piece of metal cut. Yeah. And I put one of those yoga mats. I glued a yoga mat on it with studs. So you had each, each corner of it had a stud and then one in the middle. So if you pushed on it, it was solid. Oh, okay. And that was my in-car safe. <laughs> so that was my safe. Okay. And then in the, between the two of us, we had a big wooden box with all our other bits and pieces in cameras, whatever that we wanted. Yeah. And then in the back, what I did is I, got some, I made up a box, a plywood box, um, that took up pretty much all of the back floor. Yeah. Because where, the, where they used to put the stretcher, you had then the side, which had wheel arches. Correct, yeah. And they had storage boxes in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With a flip-up so, lid kind of thing. With a flip-up lid, right? Yeah. So on the floor where the stretcher used to go, I put in this big um, plywood box, and I cut it into four. So the, the front two sections, near the seat passenger driver's side, yeah. was all our clothes. And then in the back of it was all your tin food and stuff. Okay. So, you know, there was no, we didn't buy a fridge. One, you couldn't find a fridge. And two, I couldn't afford to buy one anyway. Yeah, okay. But there was no refrigeration. It was all dry storage stuff. And then on top of that, we used to put our chairs or whatever, you know, sitting in my awning and all that stuff. But it was a base piece of canvas that I used to pull out every day. Okay. Um, and no, that's how it was. And that's how... Hang on, no fridge. How did you survive? I mean, how long were how how long was your trip? You spent. We ended up, we ended up on the road. I think it was just under six months by the time we 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 we'd been on the road. No fridge. No I fridge. Suppose is, I suppose it's Africa, right? So you can you stopping this free, fresh fruit, vegetables every every two kilometers next to the road. You can buy bananas. You can buy avo. You can buy not. No, 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 no. What, what part of Africa are you living in? You know, we're not in South Africa here, mate. We're in East Africa. Yeah. This is a whole different. No, 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 no. Look, okay. it was tin food. So when we moved, where we could buy fresh veg, we would buy fresh veg. Okay. We could get onions and tomatoes. Yeah. We had lentils, pulses, rice. Um, and all that sort of stuff, which was dry storage, right? Long lasting, yeah. So, and you could buy eggs a lot. Most places in Africa, you can get egg, yeah, eggs. Yeah. Um, 
and chicken. You can get live chicken that you have to sort pluck out. and everything else, right? Sort out. So, um, but we're on the coast, so a lot of the stuff we we're doing is eating fish. Uh, we'd make a lot of fish curries, squid curries. Man, some of the best squid curries I've ever eaten in my life. When you catch a squid and it's alive still and it's translucent, yeah. and you make up your curry sauce and you put your squid in there, immediately you kill it, gut it, clean it, chop it up, in, take it off the heat and eat it. And it was, it was softer than the most tender steak you've had in your life. Wow. Awesome. Wow. But that's how we lived. We lived off the sea at that, at that point. Yeah. And, yeah, so no refrigeration in the car at all. The only battery we had in the car, that was to start the car. That was it. <laughs> we didn't even have lights. We had torches to light. Yeah, yeah. And campfires. So, you know, off we you went. And buying, you were just buying batteries as you were going along for your torches because in those days, there were no USB charger torches that you see today, right? Correct. You, correct. You just <laughs> used battery. When you, when you went to a big town, you picked up enough to survive. You live last year until the next big town, right? Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's how it began. So... Now the car's done. I've fixed the petrol tank. I've changed all the shocks. I've fixed the leaf springs on the back, realigned them, got them sorted. Rooftop's done. New, you know, put a new pet, uh, petrol pump, new starter motor. And I had all the spares in the back of the car anyway for anything. And uh, new um, pinion CV joint seals for the yeah. wheels, for the front wheels. Um, because they, the balls were, uh, were scratched because they're old. And that's another good trick I learned. One of the mechanics, one of the bush mechanics down there said to me, sir, stop putting oil in here. Grease. I said, what? He said, grease. He said, when you're driving, the grease will get so hot, it'll become liquid. Yeah. But when you stop driving, it'll go hard again and you won't leak so much. <laughs> there we go. Love the way you're thinking, dude. And that's what we did. So, and off we went. And that, that's where it started. So, got the car, rebuilt the car, and now we're heading, now we're heading south. We, the, the journey begins. And I'll try and dig out. I've got a photo album of some pictures of what Nikita and I looked like in those days to what we do today. And... Uh, a picture of the car. I'm sure I've got some somewhere. I had a pet snake as well <laughs> down there. Oh, really? I had a pet python. Yeah, yeah. And everybody knew I had a pet python. So nobody robbed me. That's the best thing. Africa I, having a snake or having a rubber snake across the dashboard. They are not impressed with snakes. So I was okay. We were left alone for a long time on that one. But so yeah, you know, so... No, so you're <laughs> heading towards Tanzania, right? So you, you've... you've right. Straight in and coastline. So you entered Tanzania from the coastal side. You didn't go up back to Nairobi and enter. Which way did you enter Tanzania? No. So we went where we are in Diani. If you look at the map, you see Diani. If you keep going south of Diani, you go through the Tanzanian border at a place called Hora Hora. Yes. Yeah. Now and you got the Pemba. That was my. You got Pemba Island right on the right hand side of you. On your left, because you're going well, down the coast. Really it's on the east coast, right? I'm, I'm looking at, yeah. You're Pem coming the other way. So Pemba Island's further. So you go down there, past Pemba, and you're heading to Dar es Salaam, right? Okay. So you took the coast. So you got yeah. Tanga, Tanga, Dar es Salaam. Then Dar es Salaam, we went through all the way down to Lindy. Lindy, yeah. Not, there's a beautiful then, sanctuary over there as well. Yeah. Then, and then south, south of Lindy. Then at that time, it's only recent they put that elephant sanctuary up there. But yeah, Lindy. Um, and then south of Lindy, we ended up at a place called Umsumbati. Okay. Now Umsum, Umsumbati was about 15k north of the uh, Remuva River, which is the Mozambique border. Yeah. And that was in 1999. But I tell you now. Mate. Okay, so we left. We went through Tanga. Um, that was fine. Dar es Salaam was great. We got there. Um, ended up in a campsite. Met some good people. Had a bit of fun. And now 
we're going south. Yeah. So from Dar es Salaam to Lindi, we wanted, because we were all dry storage, it's a story. We wanted some Thai sweet chili sauce, a big bottle of it. And we had to wait for the stock to arrive. Okay. So instead of leaving at like seven, eight o'clock in the morning, we thought, ah, oh, we'll wait till nine, ten. Stock will come in and we'll be off. Well, it didn't happen that way, did it? As per normal in Africa, it came in about two o'clock, which <laughs> then meant I'm now on the road late. Now, there's nowhere to stop. No. And, yeah? the, and the lights on your Series 3 must have been perfect. You know, the halogen lights and you've got light bars and all that. Oh, stuff. man, I could see for a kilometre down the road, mate. No okay. problem. Yeah. That's when your wife put the head torch on, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I pinched myself and woke up, yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, now we're heading south down there. And that was an interesting trip just to get to Lindy. You know, we went through some areas. We were looking, we were trying to wild camp, and it's not so easy. No. Um, and I pulled up in one town, and this guy said to me, You can't stay here. It's not safe for you. Yeah. I said, what do you mean? I said, look, is there any way? He said, look, you can't stay here. You need to leave this place now. This is not safe for Wazungas, white people. You've got to go. And I said, well, he said, come with me. So he put me in. He turned out to be a school teacher. And we drove about 10K up the road through the, through the bush. Yeah. And we turned up at an old university town. It was like a school, a local school place. Yeah. He opened the gate took us in and parked us right at the back behind all these buildings and said, you can stay here. You're safe. Nobody will touch you here. Nice. But tomorrow morning, you'll have to go. I said, that's fine. I just need a bed for the place to stay for the stop for the night. Yeah. So we stayed there the night, which was really cool. But again, that was our first, in, first sort of introduction into you've got to be smart and where you can because planning. You know, we, we could have had a big problem. We could have lost everything just by staying there the night. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, Africa, Africa is a funny little place because you, you, can, get to, you can get to one town and you're, you're welcomed and you're actually bothered by the amount of people that are coming in and welcoming you and, and, and forcing you to come to their place or stay at, at their crawl or and then you get to another spot where it's no 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 don't come here yeah yeah and you could feel it right i mean you could feel that energy in the place it wasn't right um so we knew it but we didn't it was late it was five six o'clock in the evening it's getting dark where can i go at this point right and yeah. i can't drive on the road at night because i you just can't see no you take your chances with theft rather than take your chances on the road at night for sure so he, he really helped us out that night. And then um, we got up and moved the next day. And the next day was another funny one. We, we were heading to a place called Kilaguni. Yeah. Now, Kilaguni in its day, years ago, was a really big fishing town, um, beautiful resorts, uh, small little cabanas, beach clubs. Plus. But in its day, right? Now, when we get there, not so much. <laughs> there are your five-star places, but yeah. we're on a we're on an overland trip, and you know we're not staying there. So I found this spot. It was a old beach club, um, yeah. shut down. And I just drove in, and I went in. You drive down, and the building's on you here. So I went in and turned in from behind, so I can't be seen from the road, and no one really knew we were there. Yeah. yeah. But then the local girls from next door, they found us. Okay. And that was one of those incidences. They all swarm you. Who are you? What are you? Da, 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 da. Took, took a great interest in Nikita and stuff. And we said, look, can, we're okay to sleep here. He said, no problem. Yeah, yeah. So we were sleeping there. And it was really good. We had a nice dinner, relax. We're moving the next day anyway, because you're moving now, right? Yeah. And I wake up at about half five get out, come down off the rooftop tent, light the fire, go and do my morning, uh, my morning rituals. And I've got a lungi, a kakoya, a lungi around me. And I'm sat there and I'm squatting down and I hear this. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Ah. And I'm thinking, 
what's that? I'm looking around. I can't see anything. It's just getting light. I can't see anything. And I'm sitting there, not really caring, just me lungy on. Yeah. All hanging out for everyone to see, if you like. And this bloody chain gang comes through down the, down the side of the house where I'd just driven in. And there's all these prisoners, right? There must have been 10 on each side, drove two of them. All chained together, prisoner gear, with armed security. Ooh. Ah. I'm like, ah, ah, ah. what's going on? So, <laughs> turns out they were there picking up wood. So they turn around, they pick up all this wood, put it on their shoulders, turn around and leave. <laughs> well, I tell you what. Uh, like, Nikita, get up, get dressed, we're out of here. Right? Yeah. They're gone. 